During excavations in Egypt during the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. Now that wheat would have been about 5,000 years old. Someone decided to plant the grains and to their amazement they came to life. Now our faith in the resurrection will be like those dormant grains unless we believe that Jesus is still present with us as a real living person, mindful of the fact that we don't see him in the flesh. He touches my life in the here and now with his reassuring presence, especially at Mass. There's an old French proverb which says, God often visits us, but mostly we're not at home. That's what happened to Doubting Thomas. We're not at home if our faith in him is merely academic, or if we believe that science explains everything. That doesn't at all mean that the church is anti-science, as some people make out. The first observatory in the world, for instance, was in the Vatican. The first universities in Europe, which became the model of all universities, were mostly founded by the church and included faculties on natural philosophy and physics. Now, if the church were against physics, they'd hardly have a, a faculty of physics there. I know that the church censored Galileo, but it wasn't because the church discounted his theory that the earth circled the sun, as some people make out, but because they wanted to treat him treat it as a hypothesis rather than the undeniable truth, but he wouldn't listen. That was the nub of the problem. The Protestant church at the time actually condemned his theory as anti-scriptural. Now that's what happens when the Bible is interpreted too literally. Thomas would not believe that Jesus had risen until he had seen him in the flesh, but Jesus gently tells him, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, that includes us. The resurrection has more to do with the transformation of the inner man or woman than seeing him in the flesh. Now, if Jesus were to walk into this church right now, after all the initial excitement had died down, would there be any guarantee that we would go out and live better lives on the strength of it? I doubt it very much. Jesus didn't come down from the cross, for instance, when challenged, because he knew that if he did, the people would still not believe in him. He worked hundreds of miracles for all to see, but they still put him on the cross. It's a bit like the moon landing in 1969. Many people believe to this day that it was a fabrication, no matter what the evidence The doctrine of the resurrection is the cornerstone on which our faith is built. Tamper with that and we shake its very foundations. St. Paul reminds us that if Christ is not risen, then all our believing comes to nothing. The church wasn't built on doubting Thomases, but on the unshakable belief that Jesus rose from the dead in his human body and is with us in the church until the end of time. Thomas wanted to touch the Lord's wounds, but is it he who is touched when the risen Jesus pays him a surprise visit? Now he visits us in Holy Communion. Unlike Thomas, may we never doubt his presence with us. Thank you for watching and God bless you all.